Hey to you. I want to welcome you to another episode of How I Animate Clip Studio Paint. This episode will have to do with the timeline and the settings that go with it. Also, I'll add in some motion tweens. So go ahead and subscribe right now and let's get straight into it. Okay, we arrive here at our previous layout and settings that we had before. Now, I added a couple things um, in the animation folder, but we'll get to that. But let's get straight into the uh, timeline. And one of the, uh, I think, looked over things in the timeline is how you can make multiple timelines inside of one animation uh, file. So you see it has a drop down. This gives you the option to make more than one. So what you can do is create a new timeline. Now I did that by clicking this sandwich menu, but you can also do it by going right here. Make a new timeline and then just rename it. The other option to come up to animation, timeline, and create a new timeline here. And all that is, is just creating two timelines here. So you can switch back and forth and do different animations for the same drawings. Make sure maybe you want to do some motion tweening, so what and so forth. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is onion skin. So when you have an animation folder, you got your layers inside and stuff. Like I said, I just want to get you animating immediately. Every time I put up a video, I want you to be able to animate with a little bit more information, especially if you're a beginner. So onion skin, I want to help you understand that. So the onion skin, when you turn it on, if you click on one of the layers in the middle between the other two layers, you can see after and before. After is usually green and before is usually blue. Now you can barely see the blue, but if I turn that second layer off, you can see the blue. And that blue right there is gonna indicate where you should draw your next one. And this, this kind of, this kind of helps the animator kind of plot out their path, especially when you do all your keyframes. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is motion tweening. We got the onion skin out the way. And like I said, I just wanna add a little bit of wrinkle to your animation information um, if you're a beginner. So if I play this, as you see, we got an arrow. I just did it with some um, the, the line tool and stuff, but we'll get into those um, later. But this arrow right here, let me make a couple adjustments real quick, just so you can see that there is a difference other than the other than the um, tail in the back. Oops. Adjustment. Okay, so let's play it again. So now we see it kind of looks like something is happening. I mean, I could add more, but we'll just stick with this. So what you want to do is this animation is pretty decent for a loop. And I want to come over on the timeline on my animation folder. And I want to click enable. Well, hold on. Let's start from zero first. We're going to click enable keyframe on this layer. So now that that's enabled, we can add a keyframe. This keyframe is going to control exactly where the animation folder is going to be displaying on your screen. So I can actually come over to what we call the object tool or operating tool, but this is the object tool in its sub tool layer. And I can come over and drag, holding shift, drag this out of view. So if I'm dragging this out of view, this is where it's gonna be in the first frame. So if I bring this all the way down here and I drag this back out of view over here, that's where it's gonna be in that frame, which is frame 24, yes, 24. So if I play this back, 
it's gonna fly through the screen, see? It's gonna fly through the screen. And that's motion tweening. You just use two different keyframes or multiple keyframes to move and a basically what is a static animation, an animation that's moving in place, even a walking animation, it kind of does the same thing. You can draw an animation that just walks in place and you can keyframe it or motion tween it um, to make it move forward or backwards. Okay, this is the last part. This is the bonus. Um, and it's gonna include a little bit about animation folders, but it's basically, I wanted to complete this animation. So let me um, add a little bit more room on this timeline. And to do that, you wanna take these. These are like the um, envelopes for your timeline to tell your timeline where to stop and where to start. These blue, these blue tabs right here, that blue tab at the end and that blue tab at the beginning. And if you zoom out, you can see where your folder starts and stops, but you can adjust where the timeline starts and stops. But let's go ahead and finish this. I pulled it out a little bit more, that's three seconds. So as a bonus on the keyframe also, you have to turn this keyframe off in order to add some more frames properly so that you know where they are and you don't have to worry about anything being out of place. I wanna make sure that it's just looping, looping, looping. So in this animation folder that I named tree, I added a tree to make it so the arrow is going to fly into something. So if I take that motion tween, sorry about that, take this motion tween, turn it back on and drag it back to where this um, folder starts, where the tree is, you can see that there. And then what I, what I can do is, so let me turn it back off. I gotta add a blank frame here which will be two. Two is a blank frame in here, and I'll delete these. When I motion tween this, motion tween, boom, right? It looks like it came into the frame. It came into the frame looking kind of rough. But let me add the next frame in the folder. And there we go. So if I play this back, comes into the frame like that, see? Now that's choppy. So what I'll do is basically just adjust the keyframe. I mean, the motion tween. So I'll go back, let that come in quick, pretty quick. And I'll copy this, copy this keyframe. Come on, copy for me now. There we go. I want you to be able to see it. I could have did it with a short key, but I want you to be able to see it. Okay. And I'll paste that keyframe there. And now it's coming in. And I want it to be right on the money, which would be, hold on. Turn it back off. So I can see exactly where it's going to be. Turn the keyframe back on. And let's drag this over with the object tool to where this is. So then I can turn this back off now that I got my keyframes right. And then make this frame two again, which is a blank frame I should have named it blank but which is a blank frame and now I'm using two animation folders to create an animation if I turn keyframe back on and then I play the animation goes out of frame back in boom out of frame back in boom hits the tree 
And that's a simple rough. I didn't show the tree coming into frame. I could do some more keyframes and motion tweening with the top folder, but I wanted to keep it simple with you guys, especially if you're a beginner. So other than that, I hope you got something out of that. Next time we're gonna be talking about animation folders and the things that you can do within the animation folders. Remember, CSP is one of those programs that is great for artists. And if you like to animate also, you are going to be in artist heaven. Let's just, I'm just telling you that because Photoshop cannot do the things when it comes to brush engines that CSP can do. But that's enough of me talking and ranting. Send me your animations. And as always, animate life forever. I'm doing my mom.